so we all have those tanks that we really shouldn't love, like the poor Churchill GC, and how at the end of the grind you were sad to see it leave the garage. In light of that, today's video is dedicated to six tanks that you love to hate on World of Tanks, highlighting the best and worst parts of the tanks and showing you why grinding through these statistical nightmares might just be one of the best things you ever do in game. The first tank on our list is the Black Prince. Now this is a tank that I'm sure many of you have managed to go through in order to get to the Super Conqueror, the Chieftain, the FV215B and it's the only way that you can actually manage to get any of those tanks that I've just mentioned. The Black Prince however is not anywhere near as good as any of those and tier for tier it is one of the worst heavy tanks in my opinion anyway. In terms of just being able to actually get anywhere, your top speed of 20 km an hour forward is one that you will only aspire to actually get to. It, you will probably be going around 15 km an hour on average forward once you've got the engine upgrade because don't forget when you're stock you don't actually get a good engine and that when you start off you only have 350 horsepower that actually goes up to 600 when you get the next engine. So. Not only are you one of the slowest heavies at tier 7 in the game, you also get a terrible gun to begin with, with terrible penetration, and unfortunately for you, if you actually want that top gun, which actually gives you 200mm of penetration on its standard rounds, you're going to have to grind to the end, it's the last package on World of Tanks console anyway, and it really, really gives you a little bit of an insight as to how playing a terrible tank uh, can really really be not so fun. Now once you fully upgrade the Black Prince however you can actually have some really good games in it. The DPM is not actually terrible with your 17 pounder gun it actually makes it uh, somewhat usable. 0.34 accuracy makes the tank somewhat reliable. Um, it's not the best accuracy that you'll ever see, but you can actually pull off some really, really good shots. And if you manage to put on all of the right equipment, this tank can actually be quite useful. Now, the reason why you don't get that top speed, why it's so slow, is because apparently you're meant to get armor on this tank. Now from the majority of players at tier 5 coming up against the Black Prince, yes it will be quite a struggle to be able to go through the front of the Black Prince. The side armour is kind of a little bit troll because of its good tracks and also the spaced armour on the side of it making it somewhat hard to actually go through but if you're an experienced player and you know that you can actually pen it through the uh, top of the track so you actually have to aim above the tracks you can have some really really good games against something that has 1450 hit points. Um, yeah this tank really really doesn't have armour against anything uh, above tier 5 to be honest with you because many of the tier 6's premium rounds and standard rounds can actually just go through this really unangled front plate of the Black Prince. There's literally no angling on the front of it except from the lower bit of the hole. The turret is also fairly weak and it can actually get penned fairly reliably. The top of the turret is actually a point where you can actually get overmatched by quite a few uh, different tanks. If someone's playing in an SU-152 you can actually overmatch the very top of the tank meaning that a lot of players will actually um, be able to just pen you if they're above you slightly and it's just a tank that really doesn't favour playing in uh, high speed matches and because World of Tanks has kind of moved in that direction uh, where people are moving towards putting on lots of speed boosting equipment and various different things, uh, the Black Prince has kind of been left in the dust so to speak. Why is the Black Prince however one of those tanks that you actually love to play? Well because of those high damage games that you can occasionally have where your armor actually works and when it does it's absolutely fantastic if you can manage to side scrape in this thing you can have some really really good games and I certainly did actually end up enjoying it at the end you can actually use that gun to great effect and really really does have that DPM to be able to make it work you've got really really a nice tank overall except its armour can't be used in the way that it was meant to and therefore lots of players find it very very much of a struggle to actually play when it comes down to playing it as a singular heavy tank. 
uh, as it was traditionally meant for. The second tank on our list is the Ferdinand. Now this is a tank that many of you may have accidentally gone down. It's one of those that if you actually compare it to the alternative tank destroyer at tier 8 on the German line, uh, uh, in terms of the armoured tank destroyer on the German line I should say, uh, the Jagdpanther 2, this just does not even come close to the level of that tank and it, it really does get completely overshadowed by its counterpart. This tank is meant to be more armoured than the Jagdpanther 2 and it's meant to have that armour which actually works, it's effective, it's really really bulky and you can actually bounce a few shots. Now in practice that is something that just never really happens, it's very very flat armour which means that once again like Black Prince it's just very very easy to penetrate and you can genuinely just get absolutely trolled by this tank. The turret cheeks either side of the mantlet are just an absolute weakness, so flat and able to be penned by tier 6s very very easily. Uh, you can obviously meet tier 10s which will just go through the front of you auto aiming. This tank is just useless in terms of its armour profile, it really doesn't work. Yes you can pull off bounces if you're angling and they manage to hit the wrong part but if someone knows where to aim they will pen you at every single angle no matter how how well you try to angle they will have a point at which they can just pen you uh, reliably anyway. Now in terms of the gun and the statistics of the vehicle you can actually get this really really nice gun when you get up to the uh, top package. Unfortunately the gun is the top package and when you don't have that you're going to have some real real problems with this 8.8 .8 centimeter you've only got 240 damage per shot which is awful considering you're going to have to actually poke out against tanks with higher alpha and that have way better armor and you know you don't have a turret so pulling around a corner is one of the hardest things that you can do in this tank and when you don't have that alpha benefit you're going to have to put in multiple shots so you have to play this like it's a tank that you can just set up before someone else comes around the corner so you don't want to be poking around corners with this thing you want to actually be the person sat on the corner until someone else pulls around to actually come into your line of fire rather than the other way around this tank once again like the black prince is super slow top speed of 30 kilometers an hour forward really really useless if i'm going to be honest it very rarely gets up to top speed it's a very slow ogre and when you compare it once again to the Panther 2 which can go you know 40 very very easily if not even more it just is so pale in comparison the ferdinand is just one of those that you could really benefit from just having that extra speed it would make it somewhat more in line with the rest of the tier 8 tank destroyers it just doesn't compete at all i mean once you get get that 12.8 centimeter this tank don't get me wrong can be used in the correct way and it can actually used very well with 490 alpha damage 0.35 accuracy which isn't terrible with decent penetration at 100 meters of 246 very very nice tank to actually play and certainly can be used effectively However, it is one of those vehicles that is just iconic. The way that you see it, the way that you have to play it, it's one of those underdogs that you can actually have some fantastic games in. If you use the gun correctly, it is one of those that is, yeah, once again, really, really useful. And it can certainly have some impactful games. I know personally, I found it that very very lackluster when you didn't get the top package but when you did manage to actually pick up that one it became a completely different tank and that you actually ended up having some really good games in it you really had fun and it kind of surprised me how the statistics kind of got skewed a little bit and i actually managed to actually pull out some really good games for you guys obviously it depends on how well you play with tank destroyers, it's not your average tank destroyer, it is worse, it is kind of worse than its competitors but when you have the good games boy they are good and they really do make you feel like you've worked really hard and this tank ended up actually being one of my favourite tank destroyers to play even though it is actually pretty bad in game and it really isn't competitive in any sense of the word. And at the halfway point, tank number three, we have one of those that you've probably played if you've played any number of games on World of Tanks, and that is the Tortoise. This is the tier 9 British tank destroyer that leads onto the Badger and the FV215B183, also nicknamed the Death Star. Uh, this is one of the tanks that 
many of you will actually know as having super high DPM with that 120mm gun that it can actually get attached to it. It's absolutely devastating if you can get it into the right position. However, for the most part, this tank is very, very lackluster. It's slow. It's um, just one of those tanks that when you get it in the wrong position, boy, do you know that you got it in the wrong position and you can get taken out so easily. The armor profile of the tank once again is very similar to the previous two tanks whereby it's focused around having this armor in quotation marks um, but the armor of the tank is just not effective whatsoever it can pull off bounces and it can work yes you can actually bounce shots in this thing but for the most part if people know your weak point and boy does it have a massive weak point on the top in the form of that cupola right there um it just means that many of the players that you come up against, especially if your stock will just be able to completely outperform you very, very easily, unless you they actually just sit there side on waiting for you to just repeatedly um, take them out shot after shot. Um, but for the most part, that never really happens. And the effective DPM of the tank gets very, very limited by the situations that you can get yourself into. If you can get yourself into a position where the enemies are just like a turkey shoot then this tank can rack up huge amounts of damage very very quickly but for the most part that situation very rarely happens and by the time that you get to the action um, because of the speed of the tank managing to have a top speed forward of 20 kilometers an hour once again actually you never really get up to 20 kilometers an hour um, unless you use the new equipment that actually boosts up your speed um, it just is so, so awful to play and if you're going to play it, I would recommend um, knowing that it is a terrible tank in terms of the armor profile. If you accept that, you can have fantastic games and it can be a good tank and you have to play it kind of like a, a brawler at the end of the game. If you want to go in, you have to do it at the end of the game. If you can rack up some early damage using that DPM, then you can have really good ones. But if you try and play it like the aggressive, heavy armoured TD, it doesn't work because people's premium rounds coming from tier 10, standard rounds as well, will just go straight through your actual hull armour. And if they really want to actually aim and just pen you every single time, they'll just look at your cupola and the tier 7s that meet you will be more than enough penetration on their standard round to go through that cupola as well so it really doesn't work um, in terms of the armor profile obviously you can put your gun in the air to try and stop them from actually hitting your cupola and wiggling about to make it slightly harder but because it is just so boxy and bulky more than likely they're just going to hit it anyway and if they have that high penetration the flat plate on the right hand side of your mantlet will be able to get penned fairly reliably now enough of rubbishing on the tortoise, what is actually good about it, what it makes it fun, what makes it one of those tanks that actually you love at the end of the grind, once you've fully upgraded the tank, what makes it actually one of those tanks that you want to go back in, you want to play again and you want to try and get those massive games um, where you manage to have everything go completely right and you actually enjoy jumping in this tank from odd occasion. Now, it is because of that high DPM that you can get on the 120mm top main armament on the tank. You get 400 alpha damage, which on console, um, World of Tanks anyway, that is probably more like 370 alpha because of the silly RNG changes that they made. Um, but for those of you PC players, that will remain about 400 alpha damage. And that with combined with its high penetration means that whatever you come up against you're more than likely going to be able to pen it um, if you load premium rounds you can obviously get that higher penetration and you can almost go through every single tier 10 in the game very very reliably from the front and if you can manage to lock them down using the tracks it is so rewarding to just continually plow round straight through the track and pen enemy tanks and you can certainly do that so many times if you put yourself in the right position and positioning is the key in this tank i've actually played it a couple of times not on my main account because i don't have it but i have played it and it is a ton of fun i've played it on the test server on pc and i've managed to actually have some super games in it and if you put it into the right position like i said 
make sure that you do that early on uh, you can have some really good games when the enemies come to you and everything goes fantastic uh, I've certainly had some real fun and, and definitely it's one of those tanks that I'll have to get on console and have to have a go and, and get some replays for you our next tank in the list at number four is the T-95 now this is the tier 9 American tank destroyer that focuses on armor um, this one is probably the slowest tank destroyer in the game other than maybe the E3. Now the T-95 is one of those that many, many, many players actually enjoy playing and although the statistics on the actual tank seem to kind of put it in a position where it's very situational, you can actually have some really, really fantastic games and if you put on that 155mm that this tank can get with 750 alpha damage and put it up front against many of the heavy tanks on the opposite team, you can rack up huge, huge amounts of damage and I wouldn't be surprised if many of you have seen 7k T95 games. Um, you know, if you've played enough in the tank, I've certainly had a few myself. The reload on it is fantastic if you manage to put on all of the DPM perks that you can. However, the armor of the tank somewhat works and it can actually has effective armor. Now, for those of you that know the weak points of the tank being that slim lower plate that is actually very, very hard to hit and um, those cupolas on the top of the tank as well as this kind of like side bit that if they're angling or wiggling you can actually pen uh, just to the side of, of the hull of the tank the, the kind of flat plates and also um, the side armour of the tank as well being fairly fairly weak if um, people loading premium and obviously if you get the back of the tank you can fire um, whatever round you have into the back of it and pen every single time now the T95 is actually one of the tanks that I think is probably the most favoured out of them all on this list. Um, this one probably will actually make you enjoy the, the, the aspect of speed in the game. Now mobility is something that many people kind of forget about and when you don't have any it kind of gives you the respect for players that manage to actually have super high damage games in a tank that is as slow as the T95. You're probably looking at going 14 kilometers an hour. Obviously, if you put in the speed equipment in the tank, you can go faster, but that isn't something that necessarily everyone would want to do. And if you focus on putting a camo build in there where you've got advanced concealment or a camo net, and you put in some view range, you can certainly have some fantastic games. And that is where the T95 really, really comes into play. If you can manage to put yourself in a situation where you can continually advance, but at a speed where the T95 is favorable, not a uh, kind of a one-sided victory on one side and you just get left behind because your team have moved on at 50 kilometers an hour and you're stuck there doing 12. Uh, it has to be one of those slow advances where the team just come to you and you can just continually pump out shots it really does have great games however in those situations where you're left out in the open and you're in an open field and a light tank comes and there is absolutely nothing you can do um, that makes the t95 feel very very horrible to play and it certainly on paper is one of the things that the T95 doesn't do too well on is when people out traverse it and they get round the back and they get into the side of the tank and they can plow rounds into those areas of this tank. It makes the T95 feel a little less pleasurable to play and certainly one of the tanks that you might not actually enjoy playing at the end of it. However, for the majority of players, once they've played enough, they've learnt the kind of aspect of the tank, you can have some, once again, real great games and certainly a tank that I hope you guys try out on World of Tanks console and have a go to see if you enjoy it as well. Moving on, the penultimate tank on the list is the SU-152. And this is the tank that kind of starts it all off for the Russian TD line in terms of having that huge alpha damage in the game. It does suffer with its armor profile being very, very flat and being able to pretty much be penned by any tank that it comes up against. Even tier 5s can pretty much um, pen you very, very reliably if they load just standard ammo. It doesn't really take much premium to go through. However, the mantlet is one of the areas that you probably don't really want to be firing too many rounds at in this because there is a little bit of spaced armor in there and it does kind of stack up. And so you can have some decent bounces off of your mantlet. However, some 
tanks with really really high penetration will just pen you through there as well um, but it is very unlikely for tanks that you'll come up against at the same tier and below um, what's special about this tank is that it does get a 152 millimeter main armament that does 700 alpha damage and has a heat penetration of 250 millimeters which is far more than enough to go through any tank that you'll meet at that tier if you can manage to get off a couple shots in a game you can easily manage to pick up two and a half thousand damage and that is where this tank really does shine although it is very very slow it doesn't get any kind of real uh, traverse speed it's it can go kind of fast i guess with a top speed of 43 kilometers an hour doesn't mean that it really will ever get up to that reliably consistently it's quite slow to get up to that speed um but it can shift around the battlefield it does kind of rely on that gun to make it an actual decent tank and when you have the 122 millimeter on the tank that it can also take it's very very lackluster uh, for lack of a better word it just doesn't really work you don't have that alpha damage to kind of avoid tanks from just yoloing you you know if you've only got 390 alpha damage someone can just come around you put one shell into you turn around out traverse you because your turret traverse or not that you have a turret but your track traverse will actually um, just be way worse than whatever speed that they're going at if they're in a medium tank even heavy tanks can out traverse you and they just put their track against your front track and you're never going to be able to actually get to be able to hit them back and so when you do have the 700 alpha it does mean that those tanks won't necessarily yolo you and um, they're going to get punished if they do now 700 alpha damage will mean that if you come up against tier fives more than likely you're going to one shot them which is so so fun and that's what make this tanks fun although the statistics of the tank make it seem like it's just got a gun you can have some good games and that if you manage to put yourself in a position where you can back up against something and people are going to struggle to actually out traverse you then this tank becomes a whole bundle of fun and when you put on all of the dpm perks that you can on world of tanks you can get the reload down to some disgusting levels where you have really really high dpm at tier 7 and um yeah when you're one-shotting tanks left right and center this thing becomes a whole bundle of fun and although it isn't the best tank in the game and certainly the isu 152 is probably better uh, tier for tier the su 152 can certainly be a great fun tank to play And finally, the last tank on the list is the Maus. Now, this is the German Tier 10 heavy tank, the kind of super heavy tank out of the two German super heavies. Obviously, you've got the E100, and then you've got the Maus. If you want the super heavy, like, armoured one, then the Maus is the way to go. If you want a bit more of a mobile tank, then you'll go with the E100. Um, that kind of acts as, as more of like a, a brawling heavy tank whereas the Maus is just the chunk of hit points having 3000 hit points in the game is the most on any World War 2 game mode tank um, certainly is is got a lot of hit points that you can kind of trade with however this tank lacks in so many areas in terms of mobility in terms of its gun in terms of the armor it's meant to have the best armor in the game in terms of its its kind of size and also uh, the way that it's angled and stuff. However, when people load premium rounds because of the angling on the tank, it does mean that a lot of people can just go through the lower plate of the tank, which is massive, let me just say as well, as well as these turret cheeks, which actually become very weak from tanks that are going to be facing you. They can shoot up into those kind of angle because it is rounded means that many tanks will actually get a really good angle on the turret. And if you have like 250 millimeters of penetration, you can pretty much go through the turret. So often, a lot of the times, um, you're better off just showing the side of your turret at very, very steep angles and you can actually bounce it. And then you come around the corner, you need to actually side scrape off of things in the mouse. Because of that rear mounted turret, it makes it kind of useful in terms of that degree anyway. Um, but often your armor lets you down in this tank. And that is kind of one of the, the key things with these tanks that you actually love to hate is the armor profile. Now, many of them, obviously, they want armor. They're supposed to be about armor, but the armor just doesn't work. And um, the Maus is, is no different. Now, in terms of 
what's actually good and fun about the tank well it's obviously that you are the biggest chunkiest tank in the game that has the biggest it's the heaviest or one of the heaviest tanks in the game obviously the type 5 is is very very similar however the Maus is is an iconic tank it is the german super super heavy um yeah it's one of those that makes you laugh when you see one um you know the pain of the mouse driver going at 12 kilometers an hour to 15 kilometers an hour forward you know what it feels like to be on a map like prokhorovka and when you actually manage to have some good games on those it boy does it feel super good and when you actually manage to outplay people in the mouse and your armor actually works, that's when you have super amounts of fun. And I've certainly had a few games in the mouse on PC, World of Tanks, and managed to have some really, really great games. Although I don't have it on console, um, it does one, it's very, very similar. And although the armor profile doesn't work, if you manage to put it in the right situation, it can work. And the gun actually works fairly decently if you if you actually manage to use it right. And you can see that although the DPM on the on the gun with 490 alpha and just under 4 rate of fire rounds a minute makes the DPM pretty much atrocious. Um, if you put it with APCR rounds and you manage to actually just pen the tanks that you're coming up against slog in a way uh, for the whole game then you can really rack up lots of damage and you can have some fun. Although, for the most part, if people get around you and they outmaneuver you, then, you know, it's really, really not particularly that fun. And the statistics kind of represent that, you know, with a, a total traverse speed combined with both your turret and your hull being 31 degrees a second, you know, it's very, very painful when a light tank comes and tries to attack you. And that's that's one of the things that people find very, very hard in this tank. However, everyone loves to actually have a go, try and get those super high damage games that come around once in a blue moon. And um, the mouse is certainly one of those that just makes you laugh and, and makes you have a great time, uh, especially when you get to actually ram someone or someone tries to ram you. Yeah. One of those that I, I love to see and actually I uh, I envy the people that actually get to play it on console in terms of um, being able to have that, that kind of massive chonky tank that this tank actually is and hopefully I'll pick it up at some day uh, very soon. Now that is the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Remember to comment what you thought about the tanks that I've showcased. If you would make any changes, if you would actually uh, implement any new ones, maybe I'll make a part two of this video uh, in the future. If you want to stay tuned with the latest World of Tanks console content as well as some PC related content, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you liked it and obviously um, let me know what you think. If you want to see more content, there'll be some on screen right now. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.